lecturer in the Department of History at the University of the West Indies, researcher and author of many books on Caribbean and world history. Dr. Tilak Singh, welcome to Insights. Thank you very much for having me here today. Slavery is considered as a heinous crime against humanity. What has made African slavery and West Indian slavery different from other forms of slavery? That because it was chattel slavery, where the slave is owned by the planter and the children of the slave is owned by the planter, makes it different firstly. So chattel slavery is that you are property, right? And your children become property of the owner. But what makes the Caribbean slavery stands out, I believe, is the, the gruesome punishments that occurred and the number of deaths, the mortality on the estates. And some of the punishments were very horrific eh, in that you had the slaves being mutilated, you had body parts being cut off if they were found um, guilty of conspiring to have a mutiny, um, being involved in a riot or being ringleaders in a revolt, so that the forms of punishment show that the, the planters didn't really care about the death of these slaves because so many slaves were coming in into the West Indies via the slave trade so that the slaves were more or less disposable items. They were not even treated as humans. Often the animals were considered more valuable. What was the role of the church in slavery actually? Yes. Well, one of the reasons that the church entered into the slave trade was because of the amount of profits that were being generated in the sugar trade. All right? So we, had, we, uh, we started off with tobacco and uh, we had the indigenous labor. And then they realized that our tropical soil was so rich and the sugar revolution began right, in the mid 17th century. And the wealth from the sugar revolution, a lot of it went back into the churches. The planters there would be giving it back to their denominations that they belong to. So that the, the churches became wealthy as a result of the profits from the, the sugar. And who was working on the sugar? The labor was from Africa, enslaved labor. So we see the, the churches benefiting from enslaved labor. That is why, you know, when I tell people that it wasn't just the industries and factories that benefited in Britain and Europe from this black labor, but it was also the churches that benefited a lot. At some point in time, the churches actually got involved in the emancipation of the slaves. Why did this happen? The churches were more or less forced to become involved because of the Emancipation Act. The British Parliament had made it legal that the slaves were supposed to be free. And the Anglican Church and other Christian denominations had no choice but to ensure that the slaves that they owned were free. Codrington Estate has been a blot on Barbadian history and Caribbean history because on that estate, many slaves were brutally killed, right? Many slave families were destroyed, right? And uh, women were raped, children were killed on that estate. So it, it has a dark history. And um, later on, Codrington College was built, right, to educate the children of the planters and later the descendants of the slaves. But that Codrington estate, it demonstrated that the Anglican Church was using this as a vehicle to Christianize slaves. What is interesting too, in 2006, the Church of England held a synod and they actually apologize for the slave yes. trade yes. and they apologize yes. for the sins committed at Codrington Estate. And the Archbishop of Canterbury, Rowan Williams, he also apologized on behalf of the Church of England and he said something very interesting. He said that the body of Christ, it is not just for one fixed time. It is something that exists across history and he said that the church needs to share the shame and the sinfulness. During the 1830s and 40s, the Anglican Church had about six primary schools in Trinidad. And these schools played a very important role in educating the children of the slaves. Of course, the planters' children were also educated there. Often, you know, people have criticized the church as having too close a relationship with the government. 
too close a relationship with the planters. But it was so difficult to separate the plantation from the church because it was entwined. The profits from the plantation were partly being used as offering to, in the upkeep of the churches, in the maintenance of these churches, in the building of these churches, in helping pay salaries. So we also need to look at that. In 2007, the Archbishop Ron Williams, speaking on behalf of the Anglican Church, he agreed that reparation should be paid to the descendants of the enslaved Africans. But he raised certain important questions. He asked, how would we be able to find these descendants? Because remember these people, Africans, when they were taken from Africa, hundreds of millions, there were no records in Africa to say what tribe you came from or what area in Africa. Many were kidnapped. Many um, were sold into debt. Some form of compensation is important, but it is how much and who should be given. And, what, and then there's also the question about there were other groups like the indigenous peoples, the native Indians, who might also deserve compensation. Even the indentured persons, the Syrians, Portuguese, Chinese, Indians, many of them did not come willingly. They were tricked and kidnapped also. The church could play a role, but I'm wondering if the church is financially sound enough, right? Do they have enough financial resources to really compensate? all those descendants of, of African slaves, you know. So we have to ask ourselves the question, was slavery responsible for the present situation we are in? What was the long-term impact and effect on slavery? And why I'm saying that, I'm not just using slavery as an excuse, right? I'm not using the past as an excuse. But you see, during to slavery... explain some of the things. During slavery, People from the various tribes were deliberately split up on the plantations. The planters feared revolt. They did not want any unity. So families were broken up. Tribes were broken up. Brothers and sisters were separated. And we have to ask ourselves, did this separation, did this stripping away of an identity create an impact on future generations? And the answer could be...